Hi, welcome to our channel. This time we will talk about epiglottis. As you know, epiglottis is a structure that projects from the upper rim of the larynx and serves to prevent fluids or swallowed food from entering the respiratory passages. There is an entry to esophagus and there is a larynx in this region. Epiglottis moves back while swallowing and covers the opening of the larynx, so we don't choke on food. But that happens sometimes, especially when you try to talk and eat at the same time. <laughs> this part of epiglottis is facing the tongue, therefore we call this surface lingual surface. The surface on the opposite side is called the laryngeal surface. Let's start with the center first. Epiglottis contains elastic cartilage in the center. Elastic cartilage is composed of cells and extracellular matrix around them. We can differentiate chondrocytes that are in the center of the cartilage, sitting in lacunes. Lacunes are small spaces in the matrix, like small rooms for cells. Chondrocytes in cartilage are grouped together in so-called isogenous group. These groups were created by a mitotic division of cells. You can imagine isogenous group like a house with rooms, lacunes. Sometimes there are more chondrocytes in one room, like siblings sharing one room, and if you shared your room with a sibling, you know that sometimes it's fun, sometimes not so much. In the periphery of a cartilage, there are chondroblasts, early cells that differentiate into chondrocytes. Both types of cells can mitotically divide in early development, Later, their ability to divide is diminished. Isogenous groups are smaller, containing less cells, if we compare it to hyaline cartilage, and also the ratio of cells to extracellular matrix is higher compared to the hyaline cartilage. Matrix contains cartilage-specific collagen molecules that can be found in all types of cartilages as well as dense network of elastic fibers and interconnecting layers of elastic material that can be demonstrated pretty well with special stainings, such as resorting fuchsin or orsain. This slide is stained with hematoxylin eosin, therefore elastic fibers look bright with light eosinophilia. Cartilage in general doesn't contain nerve fibers and vessels. Innervation and nutrition is provided from the perichondrium. We can see perichondrium on the surface of a cartilage. It's made of dense irregular connective tissue and contains nerves, vessels, and also reserve cells for a cartilage, prechondroblasts, which eventually differentiate into chondroblasts that start to produce matrix, and when they embed themselves with matrix, they become chondrocytes. Cartilage in epiglottis has pores, or holes inside. These foramina allow blood vessels and nerves to pass through the cartilage, which is important for the proper functioning of the epiglottis, for its nutrition and movement regulation. Besides vessels and nerves, in submucosa loose connective tissue, there are also branched ceramucous glands in these pores, and also around both sides of the cartilage. These light parts are composed of mucinous cells, organized in tubules, and darker parts are serous acini. There are also ducts, which open on the surface. Submucosal tissue that comprises cartilage and glands is covered with mucosa on both sides. Let's have a look at the lingual part. This is mucosa, which consists of epithelium and lamina propria mucosae. Epithelium on the lingual side is stratified squamous, non-keratinizing epithelium. Lamina propria is made of loose connective tissue, such as submucosa, but contains finer collagen fibers and more migratory cells, like lymphocytes and plasma cells. Laryngeal side is covered with typical airway epithelium, pseudostratified columnar epithelium with ciliary and goblet cells. We can appreciate ciliary border that provides a barrier between the external environment and the internal structures of the cells and tissues, 
and helps move substances along the surface through coordinated movements of cilia. These cells over here are goblet cells, producing mucus, and basal cells, which differentiate into ciliary cells and goblet cells, are at the base. There are also brush cells that work as chemoreceptors. We cannot differentiate them without proper immunostaining, but they are somewhere in the epithelium. This pseudostratified columnar epithelium transforms gradually into stratified squamous epithelium on the lingual part that we talked about. Okay, that's probably it. Uh, epiglot is a kind of simple structure, I suppose. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions or just want to add something, please write it down below into the comment section. I would like to hear about your opinions and ideas. Bye.